What's up everybody, you're very welcome along to this little transfer video. Basically, I'm gonna be talking about my take on the centre-back situation. Back in the summer, when Liverpool sold Dejan Lovren to Zenit St. Petersburg, I have to admit that I was one of, the, one of the people that understood why we didn't pull the trigger and replace him at that moment in time. We were working hard on deals to bring in Thiago, we were working hard to bring in Diogo Jota, and they've been magnificent additions to the club. Now, here we all sit, myself included, in January without a single senior centre-back for Jurgen Klopp to be able to call upon. And now is when that decision, and when the decision that I agreed with, really does come back to bite us on the backside. Now, there is still time for the club to potentially go out there and resolve this issue. The clock is ticking, time is against us. We record this right now on the 28th of January. The window closes on the 1st of February at 11 p.m. UK and Irish time. That doesn't give us a whole lot of wiggle room to work with. We have seen some names linked. We've seen Mustafi linked to Liverpool. Gotta be honest, folks, not somebody I want near the club. Not somebody I think, even for a short-term deal, is worth bringing in. He doesn't suit our style of football. He's far too slow. If he ain't good enough for Arsenal, he certainly shouldn't be considered good enough to come in and play for Liverpool Football Club. Then you've got other players. You've got that guy from New York Red Bulls. It's important to remember a couple of things with regards to that. Liverpool have a good working relationship with Red Bull. We've done previous deals in the past, obviously, with both Salzburg and Leipzig to bring players in. And another bonus with that is it wouldn't cost us a loan fee. The MLS is in hiatus because of COVID. And if I believe I'm correct in saying they won't be returning until around April time, which means that we'd only have to pay the guys wages. Again, I won't even pretend to say that I know too much about this guy, but I do know that it wouldn't cost us very much and it would be another body to potentially bring in. We've also seen more links appearing over the last 24 hours or so to Sven Botman from Lille. He's somebody who, if I remember correctly, many journalists, many Liverpool-friendly journalists were baffled when we were linked to him recently. Even go, Let's go back to the end of December when we were looking into the January window and thinking, OK, who might be possible? What we heard coming out of the British-based journalists was there's no interest in Liverpool and Sven Botman. They believed it was a tactic from maybe either Lille or from the players' representatives to try and bring in more interest in the player to maybe try and drive the price up or create a bit of a bidding war. Now all of a sudden, yet again, we see his name being linked with Liverpool. Then we have the story that came out the other night. I believe it was Rory Smith that put this one out, but if I'm wrong on that, I apologise. And the story went as follows. Liverpool do have an interest in bringing in a centre-back from Leipzig, but it isn't the one that most of us are thinking of. And from that, we all think, OK, it's probably not going to be Deo Upamecano. He's most likely to go and join Bayern Munich when David Alaba moves on to probably Real Madrid in the summertime. So that then leaves you with the thoughts of who? Canade? Now, Canade's a very good centre-back. Again, he's quite young, but... I'm not somebody that has infinite knowledge or in-depth knowledge of Canada, but I have read that he is prone to an old injury or two. Now, what we have right now at the club are centre-backs who have had a lot of injuries. Virgil van Dijk, look, this is an anomaly. This was just a bad tackle that did his knee, and that's a bit different. Virgil is pretty bulletproof when it comes to injuries. But Joe Matip was only able to play, what, 49 minutes in that first half after being rested for the weekend's game against Manchester United in preparation for this. And unfortunately, once again, Joel's body let him down and it looks like he has ligament damage that I don't know how long it will keep him out for, but certainly for the coming weeks ahead. We've had to play Jordan Henderson at centre-back. Jordan Henderson is taking... So we take so much of a loss from what we are able to create going forward when Hendo's at centre back. The reason he's at centre back is because he's so good that he can play in a whole host of positions and Klopp trusts the man implicitly, as he should. He's a club captain and we all love him to bits. But we lose a little something going forward. We lose a little bit of something from Thiago in midfield when we don't have Hendo alongside him. Then we move on to Joe Gomez. Joe Gomez has been so, so unfortunate with the amount of long-term injuries he's had. It's not his fault that he was tackled against Burnley and fractured his leg. It's not the lad's fault that he's done ligament damage. People will point and say, yes, Craig, but it does prove that his body isn't up to the day-to-day -day rigors of the Premier League. And I, I believe that that's a fair statement. Sometimes players, you know, they can't help if they get injured. But unfortunately for Joe Gomez, 
it does seem like it's always a long injury when he picks them up. To me, he's the perfect partner for Virgil van Dijk. And somebody who I hope, when he puts this latest injury behind him, comes back and we see him at the club for years to come. Because I really do rate the guy. But all of that being said, we are sitting here, 28th of January, and no sign of a centre-back. Joel Matip's out. Virgil van Dijk's out. Joe Gomez is out. Reese Williams shouldn't have been thrust into the position he was and shouldn't have had so much pressure placed on him because this lad was at Kidderminster. Kidderminster playing non-league football. Then all of a sudden he's playing in the Champions League. I think the first one was against Ajax. Then he was thrown in against United. And of course he was going to make a mistake. It was always going to happen. And that's not uh, me slagging off the young lad. He's learning a position. And centre-back is a position where experience is invaluable. And he hadn't got it. And it's not his fault that the Jurgen Klopp decided that he was the only person that he could put in there to give a chance to. That's before we even move on to Nat Phillips. Nat Phillips, who was close to signing for um, Swansea and I think maybe Bristol, if my memory was correct, in the summer. Was on loan at Stuttgart for a couple of seasons. And was pretty much told that he hadn't got a long-term future at Liverpool. He came in in that second half... Um, the other night when Matip went off injured um, against against Spurs and played an unbelievable 45 minutes. I mean, he was everywhere, throwing his body on the line, winning defensive headers, making great tackles. But let's be honest, he still isn't up to the standard that we require. So the question is, in the last few days of the window, what do the owners do? What does Michael Edwards do? Do we roll the dice and think, hey, maybe Van Dijk or Gomez will come back a little bit soon? My answer to that quite simply is no, we can't, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I told you at the start of this video, I was somebody who believed that not signing a replacement for Dejan Lovren in the summer was a gamble worth taking. But that's because we're in a COVID world. That's because we knew we had other irons in the fire. But none of us could have caught in our wildest, our biggest nightmares that we would see a situation where Joe Gomez and Virgil van Dijk would both be out for the majority of the season and that we would be looking at Joe Matip as our only fit senior centre-back at the club. Somebody who is very injury-prone, picks up a lot of little niggles and stuff. And we're up shit creek. There's no denying it. Right now we're looking at going into the game against West Ham on Sunday. We're probably Jordan Henderson and I'm guessing Nat Phillips at centre-back. That's not good enough for a club of our calibre. Yes, we have Seth Van den Berg. We have um, Billy Cometio. And we have Reese Williams. We've got young centre-backs coming through. But they need time to go out on loan and develop. If these owners, and look, these owners have been fantastic, but if they really want us to stay at the top, if they really want us to be in the fight to try and regain that Premier League title, if they really want us to try and go on and win the Champions League and push this club on to not just a couple of season wonder, to push us on to long-term sustainable success, they have to back the manager. I've always believed that the transfer situation at the club was a bit like this. They all sat down in a room, Klopp gave them the players that he wanted, and if the club could afford them, they'd try and go after them. But I always believed that Klopp had final say. What I've seen recently when Jurgen Klopp speaking worried me tremendously. He looked like a man who was frustrated, he looked like a man who was tired, and he came out publicly and said, yes, I want to sign a centre-back. I understand from the club's perspective that there are money issues. We're in a world where Spurs, Arsenal and a few other clubs have had to go and take out loans to get them through. But we've also seen the Deloitte money list that has Liverpool ranked as the fifth uh, highest earning football club uh, just beyond Manchester United. And that's a great achievement for the owners. But if we want to continue that, if we want to continue bringing in that Premier League prize money, go deep into the Champions League, then the next few days are vital. We cannot sit on our hands. We cannot sit still. The owners have to go out there and get a player who Klopp wants. Now, I know that we're up against time. And I know that we're in a world that there's quarantine in certain countries. But we can figure this out. The club can figure this out. And we need to figure it out. Let's look at the possibility. We roll the dice now and we spend 40 million on a centre-back. But what does not getting Champions League football cost the club next season? What's the knock-on effect from that? And I'm not saying that if we don't sign a centre-back, we're absolutely not going to get in the top four. But it will certainly increase the possibility of us not getting into the top four. Then what happens? Are we able to attract the calibre of players that the club might have in mind for the summer? I don't know. Will players want to come into a club that isn't playing in Champions League football? What is our sponsorship deal with Nike like? Will we lose other commercial partnerships? We will certainly lose a lot of revenue. That revenue that could have been saved from going out and signing a centre-back. 
Now, I don't want this to come across like I'm sitting here bashing the owners. The owners have been fantastic owners of this football club and have done a lot of great things. I am by no means FSGO. I am just somebody who wants the best as a fan for this manager and this club. And nobody can say that Jurgen Klopp doesn't deserve to be backed. We've been excellent in recruitment. The money that we've gotten for players that we've sold on has been fantastic and the money that we spent on players that we've brought in have been pretty damn good as well and have proven to be very good value. But it's criminal if we go at this point and don't sign a centre-back. It's, it's not a joke anymore. It's not, oh, well, let's see what happens. It is almost criminal if we do not go out there, there is time on the clock. Let's get it done. I want to know your thoughts, folks. Do you agree with me on this? Have I forgotten something? Am I missing some valid points? There are going to be people on all sides of this conversation. There are going to be people who think I'm being too nice to the owners. There are going to be people who think I'm being too harsh on the owners. But above all, folks, I just want our manager to get the support that I think he deserves. He has transformed this football club. He's himself has been able to attract players in that we may not have been able to attract before. You see us linked with the likes of Kylian Mbappe. That's because Mbappe would love to come and play for Klopp. He'd love to come and play in front of the Anfield faithful. And I think if we want to continue to be a destination club, we have a chance right now to capitalise. Barcelona, Real Madrid are in a financial mess. They've been hugely impacted by um, some financial mismanagement, some terrible transfer dealings, and of course COVID as well. It is a time for us to continue to push on. We can't let the gap be closed by Manchester United. Yes, technically now they're ahead of us in the table, but you know what I mean by the gap. Manchester City, they're going to push ahead in the summer. We've seen other clubs go out. AC Milan, I think, brought Tomori in on loan. There are options available to us, and I just feel like... It is a massive stepping stone this season for us. We need to get that business done. And I hope I'm sitting here at one minute past 11 on February the 1st doing a video where we're talking about Liverpool's new centre-back signing. Any suggestions you guys have, please do put them in the chat. I'd love to know. Again, if you haven't watched Anfield Agenda before and this is your first time watching us, please do hit that subscribe button. Drop a like on the video as well. Don't forget to check out the Anfield Agenda podcast, which is out on Acast, Spotify and iTunes, and probably a lot of other good places as well. But most importantly, folks, I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. I hope that you all stay safe and well. Thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll be back real soon. Take care. Up the red.